My name is Connie Goodwin, and I've been with Siraj for, I finished my tips training back in December. So I guess I started with him December is when I got certified. And I just received my first placement on the end of last month. Decided. She did ask me last week would I adopt her. You know, it's something that we're gonna have to work towards. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say no. I'm still on the fence about it. I didn't come into this wanting to adopt, but when you get, you know, these kids touch your heart. You never know. You never can say never. Mm -hmm. So I won't say never. I'm just saying I haven't decided. Okay. I'm originally from Dothan, Alabama. Like I said, I was a military spouse, so I fostered in New York and in Virginia. When I fostered in Virginia, I um, we moved there and we had we wanted to get back to a child, and we thought about taking one because I only had my stepson at the time, and so we we my husband and I uh, became foster parents. And so we got a call one day and said, okay, I I know you wanted one, Mr. and Mrs. Goodwin, but we have three boys that, you know, just got put into the system. Would you consider taking three boys because we don't want to split them apart? So I went from having my uh, stepson to having four boys at one time. But it was a great, it was a great experience. You know, it has its highs and lows because it challenges because these kids are coming from a different environment than maybe you're used to. But um, that was about eight years ago, and they have now, both of them joined the military, and the youngest one has been to join the military, and I still keep in touch with them, and they still call me mom. And, you know, so it's very rewarding, you know. I've touched and changed those boys' life forever, you wow. know, and I only had them probably a little less than a year, so it was a great experience and it's, it's a lifelong love between me and those boys. I think it's very important with those three boys, I can think back with um, visits with their mom. And that's still important to have those connections because everybody want to know where they came from and what, you know, what made them them. So uh, I think you have to put aside your differences is why they came into foster care. And sometimes that is a challenge, you have to pray over it a lot of prayer but you have to realize you know family is important and although no matter what those children have gone through you know they're still their parents and you're, we're not here to judge we're just here to support I always wanted to help kids um, I always had a love for people and, and children I only have I have one son and we have space and I'm like what why not help a child and if I have the means to do so and the space to do so. And I love children. Yes, actually I have a friend that he's an uh, ex-military soldier and he's um, retired and he always trying to find something to do. So I was telling him uh, a couple of weeks ago, I'm like, why not be a foster parent? You have time, you have love to give for a child, to a child. And so why not share your time and love with someone that, a child that needs it? Because there's so many kids out there that need good mentors, especially men. So I was trying to encourage him to do it. And he's, you know, he's thinking about it. So I do advocate for other people to, to become foster parents. And I was a formal foster parent uh, years ago. And I always tell my kids, you know, when you grow up, think about, you know, reaching back and pulling somebody else out of the system. Right. What I would say to that guy that says he don't have much to give, I mean, you always have something to give. If you have love, time, and any kind of um, training, you can teach a child to do anything. And sometimes, even if you don't have any special Superman skills, you know, just being there, 
and you know giving that support and anybody can mentor and talk to someone and and talk your way through it I didn't have any skills either as far as when I first became a foster parent I didn't even have a child you know so and I didn't have any parental skills but you know you find your way and a child doesn't care about what you know how much you know they just want somebody to listen and spend time with them so you don't have to have any superman skills to become a foster dad well um i like to we joined the ymca so we go swimming and we plan some summer trips and sometimes we just go to the park you know it don't have to be something luxurious or expensive you can just go and spend some time at the park get get a ball or, and bat or or you know sometimes we play horseshoes and just you know be together and so that's typically what we do parks and you know sometimes the beach i will say i've never done that mm -hmm. um medical, medically fragile kids i can honestly i've never been had the opportunity to foster one of those kids but you know they're kids it's just like anybody else so why be afraid of you may have to make some accommodations but you have to think about those kids it's probably a little bit harder to place so why not take a challenge you know and those kids need loves and they need good homes too so and you know with Siraj they've been really really great about support so I'm sure if that you know if you take one of those kids they'll be able to support you support whatever accommodations your home needs and you know in an interim they're still a child right that needs love and they need a good family so i wouldn't be afraid because i'm sure between you know, your love and care and Siraj support you can make it happen kids with summertime and summer vacation i know what my current placement she's all excited about summertime and summer vacation and we just planning you know trips and doing activities uh, she is gonna go to the uh, Montgomery summer enrichment program so she is gonna attend summer school because she was virtual but you know I did tell her that you know you know you're gonna go to summer school and that's needed to be uh, supported in your going to the next grade but we will have fun time we still will do things on the weekend there's still afternoons um, so don't think of it as a negative, think about it as a way to support your next school term that you're about to go into. But they're all excited about, you know, summer fun and summer activities and, and we're making lots of plans. Oh, I like to garden. I like to bowl and I'm trying to get into swimming. Um, I really love to travel. So I was telling my foster daughter that, you know, she could look forward to traveling and going places and seeing things because that's what I like to do. Um, I like to decorate and um, the support I've gotten from Siraj Family Homes, I, it has been excellent. They didn't pay me to, to say this. <laughs> I was telling Jasmine and Miss Princess and Miss Ball that I have never, like I said, I've fostered in New York and Virginia and I've never had the support that I've had with Siraj I've had good support don't get me wrong but these people will call and check on me at 9 o'clock at night they if I need a respite they're there to support if I just need somebody to come over and spend a little bit of time with the kids they're there I never feel alone at all I never feel left out I never feel like I can't call somebody if there's a situation and when you're fostering kids and you don't know where they, their backgrounds are you want to feel confident that you have that kind of support and I heck I can say I will give a hundred and ten percent I mean I'm so ecstatic about how much support I've received from Siraj and you know I was telling Miss Princess that yesterday I'm like okay why do y'all do this because y'all go above and beyond and she said with well, thank you know Mr. Siraj you know because he you know used to run a group home and he understands that foster parents need breaks and support and so he gets it so that's why we're here doing things that normal foster um, agencies don't do and because I've never seen anything like it I <laughs> never 
and I'm like, is is this real? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, so I mean, don't be afraid. You know, I'm not afraid of anything they throw at me because I know I may not know about the child, but I know I'll get the support from them to make it successful. Um, the only thing maybe is important to just instill is the connection with their families, maybe getting the parents together with the kids, maybe once a month, if that's possible, mm -hmm. and encouraging that unity with their, their parents, um, and making that a little bit more consistent, because I know it's important, that's something my foster child is looking forward to, a visit with her family and her siblings. Cause, and I will say that because I know some of these kids have siblings and they're spread out all over the place. I think it's important for these siblings to at least maybe once a month to come together and have a connection. Because that family connection is very important to that child's growth and to know where their siblings are. Because sometimes they worry, you know, where are, my, where are my brothers and sisters are. So I think if that unity connection could be a little bit more consistent, that would close the piece of the puzzle because Siraj, you have the connection with Siraj. I think the kids just they need to have the connection with their families and, uh, and siblings. Okay. The toughest moment of being a foster parent that I've gone through and is they did place a little boy with me that I wasn't able to foster. And you know, some ch you have to know what your uh, your limitations are because you want to be the best foster parent you can be to a child and sometimes the best thing is knowing where your limits are so you want to exceed those limits and because you never want to hurt or harm any child and the hardest thing was realizing that that child that was beyond what my needs what my abilities could be when I couldn't foster this child and I had to say I, I, I can't do it was the hardest thing mm -hmm. I ever done it was I told Miss mom it's like leaving my kid at the hospital because I felt like I was leaving him behind but like Ms. what I was told by Miss Paul is some you have to know your limitations mm -hmm. you can't foster every child and you know realizing that is growth mm -hmm. My uncle and, again. and because maybe somebody else with more specialized skills can foster that child and they can put somebody else in your home that's more more suitable to your skill mm -hmm. and so that was the hardest thing because I had never experienced that and but you know realizing that and getting over that was 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 very difficult. Mm. The greatest moment is, you know, summing it up, seeing those boys that I raised in Virginia graduate from the military school and become young men because when they started off with me, they didn't have that hope of what changing and bettering their lives from what it was. And to see those boys become men and fathers and great fathers is just awesome to me. You know, they're married now, they have kids, and, and you know, I touched their lives. You know, what me and my ex did touch their lives and that possibly changed their lives forever because my ex was military. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking maybe something that he saw in him, you know, wanted them to join the military. Mm -hmm. And they're, they've been, you know, great boys that turn into great men and still have that connection after all these years is wonderful.